to my channel it is of course the one and only Chelsea of she designs things and in today's video I'm going to be talking to you about the new full page embed feature when to use it when not to use it and the use cases that I found it to be most beneficial so this video is gonna be kind of long um, I will leave chapters if you're interested in one part over the other but keep in mind I don't write a script and I just kind of go off of what I'm looking at. So <laughs> you might want to pay attention to the entire video uh, if you want to learn a little bit more in depth about the latest feature. Now, for those of you who are new here, my name is Chelsea. I'm a professional photographer, graphic artist, and web designer based out of Central Florida. I make these Google site tutorials and other website tutorials <laughs> uh, to pretty much help people, you know, small business owners like myself, save time, money, the energy, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I do also promote my Google site template, but I do also create websites in other platforms such as WordPress and Wix, Squarespace, Webflow, you get the point. I kind of do it all. All right, so let's just go ahead and start the video. Inside of the latest embed codes, this is what I used as the example. Now, if you noticed, whenever you add something to a full page embed, and I'll show you, uh, whenever you add something to a full page embed, it actually will take over the entire page so if you make a change to it then it what ends up happening is you can't make a change to just that it'll delete whatever you have in there before and then you're basically redoing it so let me show you what i mean by that so we have this page here with the full page embed it allows custom code what does that mean <laughs> What does that mean, you know? Well, it basically means whatever you add to this page, that's it. That's it, you you can't you can't do one of these. Let's see, uh, untitled doc document, just throw one in there. Now that that's in there, let's see if I can add the calendar as well. Insert. Nope, one or the other, one or the other. So that is the whole purpose of the full page embed. It allows you to add whatever single item on this side you wanna add or whatever custom code you wanna have. So it is not necessary for absolutely everything, but I'm gonna give you guys the most important thing in my two days of experience that I have found that it is necessary for, and that is a full shopping cart experience. Now, I myself on my website have a separate sort of shopping cart experience. Um, I use PayPal embeds for mine, and I'll just go ahead and show you what that looks like. If you've never seen my website, make sure you head on over to shedesignsthings.com, go to the shop, and you can see my website templates. So here we have, uh, let me scroll down. The naturalist you can view the naturalist website or you can click where it says buy the naturalist and i have my embedded paypal codes which allow people to purchase the website or web design template so you can pay with paypal and i'll show you to do a little pop out and yeah you get the point so that's how i do mine but i i also understand that some people want that realistic uh, shopping cart because they own a full store. Now, everyone has probably come across Equid when it comes to Google Sites and trying to figure out what you want to do as far as having um, like a shopping cart experience. Now that Google Sites has the new way of adding things in, it works phenomenal for those of you who uh, used to have Equid on your website, but you never paid attention to the way it looked like on a mobile device. Now, if you look at your Equid site and you move it from a regular Google site page over to say a full page embed, it will be responsive. 
it will be responsive. Can you see that? You can click and I'll just, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this, this lady one. Small, medium, large, whatever the case may be. And then this is actually a light box, so click it and it will pop out. Cool. Add to, you can add to bag. There is no back button. You can do add to store cart or click back to the store once you do store. So track, uh, shopping bag, whatever, but there's no back arrow for people who are going to be purchasing products on your website. So I'm gonna do a medium, add to cart. Now it's in the bag, but you don't get a like, uh, a button for you to do it unless you hit view bag and then you do like check out store shopping cart and now you can go back to your store so there are shortcomings to using it but for some people this might be the best option for them now I am still very much very much working on the integration with reflow toolkit um, just so you know, I did make a video about the five types of payment processes or uh, payment checkout systems you can have on your Google site. There's a multitude. It just, it's really based on your business. The good part about using the uh, Iquid portion of it is whatever you're doing, your catalog, your maintenance, that will all take place in your control panel inside of Equid. So you don't have to make changes in your website. You only have to make changes in here. Here I have the product page checkout. I have found that the only issue I have with using the reflow toolkit is that I have to put everything on one page if I want it to show up responsively uh, because when you add to cart, the code requires you to redirect to a new HTML. And you can't have that within your Google site because you don't have access to your head. You don't have access to your site index. You just don't have access to the code for your actual website. So because of this, when building a shopping cart, you must make sure that it's restricted to one page and one page only, unless you're doing like a PayPal button where you can add to cart. Now here in the reflow toolkit, if I hit add to cart, it'll add the product to the cart. And I had to add the cart now to the top portion of it. So you can see that I have uh, the ability now to check out. If you hit check out, you're able to put in your details, select your country, uh, hit next. And there we have it. Now I'm actually able to check out, hit show summary. And this is all done with the reflow toolkit this requires developer knowledge uh, to be able to do this would have to be developed for a single page checkout processing and you can do either paypal or stripe to integrate with them and they don't cost any money so i do like them as an option and once I figure out how to lay out the, the actual code, then I'll probably share it. It'll be an option that I add on for my clients because you can have multiple stores. Let's discuss the uh, awesome stuff coming soon. It's not necessary to have this on its own in a full page embed. And I'll explain why. You're gonna have to figure out where you're going to be hosting your images, where in here you can just drag and drop your images if you're using a standard Google site page. Um, you can also just select an image for your background. So this is what this is going to look like on a mobile device. And this is what this is gonna look like on a desktop device. Now, if you want, you can just hide the footer so that you don't show the footer here on this particular page. Now, if I hit preview, there you have it. Now I do have this white bar at the bottom, but I'm not as concerned about, about that anyway. If you do a full page, you have to keep in mind that you have to actually code the full page. I.e., if I wanted this entire page to show up just like this, I would have to write the script for it. There's no other way. I couldn't, I couldn't just uh, embed one thing 
like you do here with the embed. No, you have to have the entire script for the page in order for it to show up. So that is basically the gist of using the latest feature. If you can think of some other ways that you would like to use, say the full page option, just let me know and leave a comment down below. But again, I just thought I'd share my knowledge. All right, thanks so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great week and of course, laters.